<clears throat> recording uh, a third option. This this one I'm going to call Plan C. And this one is going to be roughly the same outline of the building. I got I got a site that is right my property lines, which I'm abbreviate, abbreviating here. Did I miss it? Yeah. Whatever. So, and that's my 300 feet, and there's my 200 feet. I'm going to use that building profile that I got before, that is 75 feet, right? We went, let's see what we did here, 75 feet in that direction. We cut a cut a little piece out of and now what I'm gonna to try to do is do a couple stories. So we had we had a stairwell here. And I have to explain that stairwell because I've saw some drawings that where we don't quite understand it, but just to remind you guys, the stairwell I'm looking for that climbs, negotiates two stories, it's got to be 10 feet by 20 feet, 25 feet, right, to be safe. And that's a scissor back stair uh, that allows you to reverse direction at a landing. We'll probably start the next class um, reminding ourselves of that because that's something that you should remember from um, codes and construction. So I think I'm going to continue that L shape for the building footprint, but this time I think I would like for this part of the building to have upper stories. <clears throat> so let's, let's say we divide the lower, the upper floor here and let's put a stair at this location and see if that works, All right? So there's, there's the shape of our building. Um, it's 75 feet to here. 50 foot was the, that original division. And then another 75 feet there, right? And what's this dimension? I think we, one, two, three, four, 50. There's a hundred feet there, so fifty feet there. I think that's that's what we did. Okay, so the upper stories are going to be that. Does that work? Let's measure a diagonal across the building. I'll 
draw the diagonal. Well, let's get this out of the way. I don't need the, the trace anymore. I can simply draw on that one. Uh, a diagonal across the building is um, we already figured that out remember what it was but I will look it up I think it's about 225 feet. So the diagonal two hundred and twenty-five. Divide that by three. We have to talk about dead end corridors, by the way. Uh, uh, again, repeat it. This is a non linear process so okay so that's 75 feet my mother's calling Seventy-five feet. So the distance between these two exits, ma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I have to finish a recording. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. My mother called to. Tell me she found money in the street. Um, that diagonal is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the square root of 5 squared plus 7 squared, which is 7, 49 plus 25. Let's see what. That doesn't sound possible. Ah, 70 squared plus 50 squared. Yeah, 80, so that 80... That's 86 feet. Between exits. So that's okay. One third is 75 feet distance between exits. 86 feet, that's okay. We're not going to have a dead end corridor because we could at the ground floor if our corridor were to go more than 50 feet in this direction. So the corridor that, that traverses it goes past that stairwell has got to stop. 
before it goes 50 feet. So we have to have some program outside of that. Does everybody understand that? So somehow or other, we need program, right? The corridor has to end in a, a connection to an apartment or a store or something like that. So there's our corridor. There's our upper, upper story and lower story. So plan C The two drawings you need for this building, let me get a piece of trace. Let's draw it like this. Floor one for plan C. And then floor two Or say floors two, three, and four. The, the, wouldn't matter, right? It, it, it all depends on what your FAR is going to be. But let's say upper floors, plan C, floors two through N whatever the height of the building is. And the exit's still the same. The corridor may change. Okay, the, the corridor may go out in that direction and then return. Remember, this, that's maximum fifty feet, and the corridor on the upper floor may be different. Presumably, you could single load this part of the building and double load this side, but that's, that's, uh, that's arbitrary. What's important is that the exits work. Now, what I'll do is uh, scan, scan this That's your, your, your plan C. And we, we need to determine the area. Zoning, see if it works. What else did we ask for? Corridors, which I've done. Stairs, exits. Zoning, uh, I think we decided to look up neighborhood. You don't want to put a building neighborhood. I want to put a 10, uh, 
10 story building in a in a district that's not uh, high rise for example or zoned or has a zoning constraint that otherwise prevents that okay so this was short it's a third uh, possibility for a building oh the setbacks we need to record your setbacks which you can measure here I mean that's perfunctory exercise at this point right all you're doing is recording whatever's on on this drawing oh and your floor area ratio area ratio which you cannot know until you have the area of the building right the footprint the building 